In this video, we will begin our exploration of time series forecasting. In time series forecasting, we use historical sales data to extrapolate and predict future demand. We will start out by focusing on three fairly basic time series forecasting methods. First, we will look at the last period demand forecasting method. Second, we will learn about the simple average forecasting technique. And third, we will explore the moving average forecasting method. Let's begin by focusing on last period demand. To illustrate how this forecasting method works, let's look at a data set of 52 weekly demand observations. As the name suggests, the last period demand forecasting technique assumes that a forecast for a given period will be equal to the actual demand observation of the preceding period. This is illustrated by the blue line. Now let's zoom in and focus on the last few weeks of this data set. We are currently at the very end of the year in week 52. And we want to develop a forecast for week 53. According to the last period demand forecasting method, the forecast for week 53 will be equal to actual demand for week 52, which was 436 units. As you can see, this forecasting method is very simple. In fact, it is quite naive, which is why it is also called the naive forecasting method. Now let's explore the second basic time series forecasting technique, the simple average forecasting method. Let's look again at the same data set spanning 52 weeks worth of sales data. And now let's find the simple average of all these demand observations. Again, let's zoom in and focus on the last few weeks of data. You can see that the average weekly sales volume over the past 52 weeks was a little over 500 units, 512 to be exact. Accordingly, if we are currently in week 52, this will be our forecast for week 53 if we use the simple average forecasting method. Now let's take a look at the third basic time series forecasting technique, the moving average forecasting method. Again, the name of this method is quite descriptive and tells us how this technique actually works. In this particular case, let's take the example of a four week moving average forecast. In other words, we calculate a forecast as the average of the four weekly demand observations that precede the forecast. Let's zoom in for a closer look again. As we find ourselves in week 52, we are calculating the forecast for week 53 as the average of the demand observations for weeks 49 through 52. In this case, we obtain a forecast of 413. So let's recap. We looked at three basic time series forecasting methods. The last period demand forecasting method, the simple average forecasting method, and the moving average forecasting method. We found that each of these methods gives us a different forecast for week 53. This raises some important questions. First, which is the best forecasting method? Second, how can we choose the quote unquote right forecasting method? And third, how do we implement these forecasting methods in practice? Finding answers to these questions will be among the objectives of this module on time series forecasting.